Hey, ladies and gents, Tyson Popplestone here from relaxedrunning.com. This is the Relaxed Running Podcast. Uh, huge guest on the show today. Really excited to, to introduce you to her. I'm sure you've heard of her before, Genevieve Lacaz. Uh, I keep calling her Genevieve Lacaz. It's Jen Griggs, and now she's a married woman, um, but it's it's lodged in my head as Jen Lacaz, so you're going to have to give me a little while to uh, <laughs> to remember that. Uh, I reached out to, to Jen like three or four months ago and, and told her about the podcast and asked her if she'd like to be on. And uh, she was really keen, but obviously I like to do the interviews in person if possible. And she was up at uh, Falls or she was planning to go to Falls. So we were sort of texting back and forth for a couple of months, trying to lock down a date that we could both meet up. And just so happened that uh, that it finally came around and it was awesome. I went to visit Jen at uh, hers and Ryan's place out in Sandringham. And uh, and we just sat out the back and, and chatted for a bit over an hour about all things running. Uh, Jen's an Olympian. She's a Commonwealth Games rep. She's the national 10K champ at the moment. She's also the national record holder for the 3K steeple. And uh, it's always interesting when you go and meet someone you've you've never met before because you, you wonder how the conversation's going to go and whether it's going to feel natural. And I just couldn't believe how, how easy this chat was. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we were having a blast and, and having a laugh. And uh, I try and keep these as, as relaxed as, as possible. Pardon the pun there. Um, I, I don't just want it to be a, a running interview. I want you guys to, to get to know the person behind the athletics a little bit and what they do outside of their running and, and how they switch off from running. And uh, I felt like this this chat was a, a really good representation of, of what I'm trying to create. Jen was, uh, Jen was a superstar, super easy, super friendly. Um, this was a blast. This was really good. Uh, we got some bonus features as well. If you didn't know, that is now available at relaxrunning.com in the membership section. Uh, what are you going to get there? Well, you access the Elite Insight video. So after every podcast uh, that I do, I'll get out my camera and get out the recorder and and I'll ask really specific questions to running training, whether that's you know how do you structure your week or using fuel uh, f- food as fuel. Um, preparing for your first marathon, recovery from training. Uh, there's a there's a whole heap of bonus content that regardless of, of what level you run at, uh, the answers to these questions from the best runners in the world are, are really going to guide you along your way. So jump on there. It's it's five bucks a month at the moment. It's brand new. It's a growing library. Um, so that's why it's so cheap. So if you want access to that, uh, it's going to keep on growing every time we do a podcast. So right now we've got Olympic runners and national record holders. We're going to have sports doctors and nutritionists. And um, it's pretty much we're trying to create a masterclass for you guys to come to and have access to the best minds in the sport so that you don't have to pay hundreds of dollars to uh, you know try and get access to this information. We uh, we have it all there for you. So um, in the future or not too far away, you'll also have access to bonus podcast episodes that we do with Olympians and the Guru and uh, a whole heap of other people. So if you wanted to jump on board, that's relaxrunning.com. Just click on memberships. And as I said, it's it's five bucks a month. Guys, that's uh, that's all I really needed to say. Uh, been appreciating so many of the reviews and things that have, that have been coming in and, and the little ratings, they all help. So if you haven't done it yet and you're enjoying the podcast, please jump on iTunes and uh, and leave us a little five-star review. Even if you don't, even if it's not worth five stars, as I always say, just give us four. Just be friendly. Look at the bright side. Um, also, had some of your requests coming through as to who you would like us to interview or any of the questions that you have for the athletes. So if you're not already on our Instagram, it's just Relax Running. Send through any questions that you have for our upcoming guests and uh, and we try and or I try and just let you know what's going on so that you can be in the loop and uh, and have your questions ready for the athletes when they come in. So guys, enjoy this episode. Don't forget to check out the Relax Running membership, five bucks a month, access all the bonus features over there. All right, I'll get out of your way. This is, uh, this is me and Genevieve. Gregson. You didn't give me a, a, enough love on how ridiculous no, I look. So in that. the reason why that is funny is because <laughs> I have a bit moji that Ryan made me get, but you've got the same one as Matt Ramsden, where it's like <laughs> a three, like three D so, version. Like it's, it's so hilarious. ridiculous. I am. Um, I'm so embarrassing because I just got this new phone as well. I uh, I've been like way overusing it. So every time Jessie, my wife, messages me, she'll get one of those back. 
Yeah, she goes, that's babe, a... like it's so cringy. You're like an old no, man. No, so Ryan does it, and Ryan thinks that he like has Jewish ancestry, and he always puts the little like Jewish cap on his head with his bit emoji, and like sends them through. And I'm like, does he? You're not Jewish. <laughs> yeah, just trying to claim yeah. it. Yeah. Oh man. But no, the Bitmoji thing's funny because um, we were teasing Matt Ramsden because he was trying to get in on the Bitmoji thing and he was sending in that version and that's like a different version to the Bitmojis we all downloaded so we were like teasing him. What's your one? What have you got? And mine's like more of a cartoon. Like yours is... <laughs> yeah. Wait, I'll um, do one now. I'll send it to Ryan. <laughs> I um, When you said he was up in Sydney, I assumed that he was up at the... Because was Sydney Track Classic... Was it the Track Classic that was on last night? Yeah. Did they have a 15? Because I on the way uh, down. Women's 15. Ah, uh, because I got Jesse to, to Google the results and there was no 15. I was like, oh, I wonder what he's doing up there. I was trying to I was trying to figure it out. No, 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 yeah. See, how mine's like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, what? Is this the updated That's version? The, no, I think this is like the Bitmoji. I don't know what this one is. Oh, like, uh, lame. I'm deleting it. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll go. We'll get yeah, into it. Yeah. I, uh, actually, before we'll have a, have a bit of fun. Did you, did you go to the races yesterday? Are you allowed to talk about this on a podcast? Yeah. Yeah, I don't want the, like, no, the coach to know that. As yet. in races, the horse racing. Yeah, is that what no. happened? Well, I didn't go, no. No, okay, because I thought we can edit this part out, but I remember um, when I was trying to, remember we were trying to set this up and we couldn't Sorry, nail it. Yeah, date. I was confused. And, no, so, I and you know how I kept, to me no, you you know how I kept saying it was on the Sunday? Uh huh. That was last weekend. Because I went on a Sunday. And I remember thinking, oh, well, that works. Because you know how I kept insisting that the 23rd was a Sunday? And you're like, I'm pretty sure it's like – and you were, I was getting really confused. And I was like, how did I get this so wrong? But, yeah, I went to the races. Um, yeah, it was the last Sunday or the Sunday before, and it clicked in my head. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Tyson must think I'm just so off the mark. Yeah, it was it was so funny because I, I felt bad that I was trying not to be – the hardest oh. part of organising a podcast with someone you don't really know – is not being that bloke that texts you 25 times and go, hey, Jen, like, I'm just making sure I've got the date and the time and everything, right? Um, so when when we were speaking about dates and you go, okay, like, I'm pretty sure that's a Saturday. I'm pretty sure that's a Sunday. <laughs> I was I was looking on, like, I went to Google and I was like, all right, Tice, make sure this is set to <laughs> oh, Australia. And then so I was dumb. like, oi, like, I'm, I don't want to be difficult. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I that know. was like, did you and end up going last weekend? Yeah, we went. How we went. was it? It was bad because we had members tickets and I turned up in a play suit and on the number one thing on not to wear is a play suit. What's so we a play got rich, suit? Like a jumpsuit where it's pants connected to your top. Oh, yes. And I got denied entry. <laughs> so we what had to go to play suit. I don't know, but on the back of our ticket, because Ryan's like, can you please read the members ticket on dress code? And I was like, Ryan, girls get away with anything. Like I can wear whatever I want as long as it's like not ripped denim. Um, and as soon as we walked up to the gate, the lady goes, you can't come in. No, no play suits. And I was like, Oh my gosh! And Ryan's like Genevieve, I told you. So to read no conversation. That. No, no, it wasn't up for debate. So the whole group that we'd had, we invited Collis and Selma. Uh-huh. We invited Nick Bido. We had Tim, Marion, Ryan, and I. Um, we all had to go to generals because of my <laughs> dress code, and everyone's like typical Genevieve. I bet you so. look like a boss. Oh, is that right? Well, yeah. That's a that's a reputation. Yeah, that's yeah. A... It's like I think Nick even laughed. He's like, yeah, you would get the be the one that gets rejected. And I was like, oh, but we were gonna fight our way back in and try argue our case. But I was like, it is not worth it. It's a Sunday. There's no one here. So generals was really fun. That was we were pretty much the only group there. We just set up camp on the grass and watched a few horse races. Still a good so, day. Yeah, it was a really good day. I noticed a lot of the MTC boys that referring to like the actually Ryan's a culprit for it I look at him Big sometimes culprit. in terms of uh like I'll read something he writes on his status I'm like I'm pretty sure that's a horse, horse racing lingo, term yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah okay so that's your that's your territory yeah so it's funny because when um Ryan's family yesterday were asking how he should go in his 10k this morning um he said something like heavy track um <laughs> speed map uh slow at the start but should come home strong like he was talking like it was a horse race and I was just like oh gosh but, um, yeah, we all are very avid um, horse racing followers and every Saturday um, we actually have a group chat with me, Brett Robinson, Joel, Tobin White and Ryan um, and it's called Super Saturday and it was developed because on Saturday is a big betting day, horse uh-huh. races, and so we used to all just send in our tips every Saturday. It's just so difficult now with training because we train Saturday <laughs> mornings and we used to just like rush our cool down so that we get on our phones and bury our heads There's in so much time to spend down at the race course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I remember the first time I ever met uh, Brett was 2000, 2011 and I was running National Cross Country up at Canberra and we all, like there was a group of about five or six of us went out for breakfast the next morning and I remember Brett was just on his phone. Yeah. I was like, mate, what are you doing? Yeah. He's like, oh, sorry. He's like, I'm looking for, I'm looking for races. Like yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find it. So I was, uh, 
that was whenever I see something about him at a racetrack or betting or horse racing, yeah. I go, okay, that this is where it's at. This yeah. is where it's all stemmed no, from. It, it started to absorb our life. We had to like all make a conscious effort to effort to step back for a while because we realised our Saturday's complete write off. And then if you didn't have a good Saturday, you chased your bets on Sunday, <laughs> some country town. So um, that's so funny. Yeah, Ryan and I kind of enjoyed going over to Europe after a while because you can't you know, bet on our apps when we're over in Europe and it was a good break. It was refreshing to get away for a while. So do you bet yourself? Yeah, you yeah. But because I'm so OCD from running and I'm wired that way, I kind of track everything. So, um, like, in my phone I, like, write down how much I put into my bank account and make sure I make it back. Otherwise I'm like, okay, you're not allowed to you know, okay. bet anymore so that I don't lose control. <laughs> but yeah. Ryan, he's really good. He put $50 in his account and turned it into like three grand. So he prides himself on oh, wow. never being in debt. So um, I said it's a healthy hobby as long as you're in the profit zone after that. Maybe he does it. have some Jewish no. ancestry. Yeah. <laughs> because I feel like the numbers is something, it's a stereotype, but stereotypically yeah. speaking, the, the, no, he's, he's a really good reputation. He's good. We have a like a kind of a program we follow. We follow Just Horse Racing, Sky Tips, and um, we have our favourite like commentators and um, punt, punt, you know, like experts. So we usually, Friday night used to be study guide, <laughs> study the form. <laughs> and um, we would all kind of send in our Friday night tips of what we thought how Saturday would play out. So it's funny because now we've got family members involved in our, we've got this chat where it's like 10 of us and it doesn't matter who, you know, where everyone is in the world on Saturday, someone is in that chat sending through tips. Oh, so that is so actually funny. hilarious. Actually, I saw, I was looking on Instagram the other day. Yesterday it might've been, you might've had something to do with this and it was a uh, I think it was at Box Hill. There was a 1500 race that was finishing up and there was like a bank of girls coming around the final bend. But they had laid it with like a horse racing commentator. Oh, um, really? And it was awesome. And I, I can't remember who, who posted it, but I thought, mate, we need a that little bit hilarious. of that in athletics just to – because there's something exciting about the way they deliver a, yeah. a race that it'll make out. No, that would be brilliant. Well, Ryan on Instagram, he follows like all the horse – racing accounts and all the jockeys and he's like continuously tagging us all in like um william pike's instagrams or um hugh berman's instagrams and just recently these guys started following ryan and ryan was like bragging because the jockeys the famous jockeys in australia were following one on instagram so we're all like oh i'm gonna have to start pestering them and tagging people in their um comment section just to get their uh, attention so they start following us <laughs> I was uh, I was sitting next to a, a, a bloke on a plane a couple of months ago um, we we're flying down from from Sydney back down to Melbourne and I said mate like what do you do and he goes uh, he goes uh, I actually I'm, I'm a mathematician I was like, oh, like how does, what do you do with that like cause I didn't know what a yeah. mathematician would do yeah um, he goes I actually he goes I use it to um, each weekend I'll, I'll look at all the like the really big bets like I'll go to each of the big betting agents mm -hmm. find out like what their big bets are uh, where there's like double your money opportunities and I'll, he goes I'll, I'll crunch all the numbers to a degree where I pretty much can't lose. Wow. And he goes uh, but he was telling me that he had had so much success that every major like betting organisation yeah. in Australia had cancelled his ability to bet so he couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. So he's uh, he was sort of in a bit of a crossroads as to what he would do with that but are you guys uh, like when you when you say the study guides when I go to the horse races if there's anything that has a pop or a Tyson in its name I go oh, that must be my <laughs> yeah. horse no um, and I've got a very bad right uh, you know track record of that's where you start going poorly is you get superstitious and instead of you know sticking to the facts and the knowledge of what you've read about you start seeing like your favorite number or there might be like a horse with Ryan's name in it or there's one <laughs> called like Jenny wins or something <laughs> I've bet on so many times and there's just you start following all these superstitions and omen bets and that's when you probably start losing all your money because it's like why what reason other than its name did uh -huh. you bet on that horse another one we do really poorly is we get our favorite um jockeys and all of a sudden that jockey can't lose <laughs> so anytime he's racing it's like yeah bet on him bet on him but it's like you didn't even look like he could be put on a complete dud of a horse to try, I don't know, make it perform a little bit better than it has in the past, but it's not going to win. So we're always doing on the nose bets. So I've, yeah, sometimes just got so frustrated and stepped away for a while and been like, okay, I need to do something else with my life. This is really disturbing. <laughs> is this something that has Ryan roped you into the, uh, yeah, the I wild think world of horses? It was kind of like, um, you know, like adapt or die sort of thing. It's uh -huh. like if he and his mates were all going to um, bet on a Saturday on their apps, it's like, I could go find another hobby and do something alone or I could just jump on board and then I became so addicted to it because it's so fun. But, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where it's if, if we've had a really hard session on a Saturday morning or a Sunday 
long run, it is nice to just lay in bed, sit on your phone or sit in front of Sky Racing and actually just chill out. That is so funny. Yeah. I wouldn't have picked you as a, as a horse racing <laughs> yeah. girl. That's funny. Yeah, I've got too much downtime, I think. Oh, well, that's the beauty of being a runner. I was I can't remember who I was laughing with. I think it might have been Ben Buckingham. But um, when we were trying to organise this podcast, I remember just giving you a call out of the blue one day because my text message response rate yeah. just that wasn't, wasn't fantastic. And uh, and I remember you had a really quiet voice. I was like, what are you like? Is everything, oh, what's going on? Nice. And... Uh, Speaking of downtime, you're like, I'm sorry, Ryan's just having a nap. Yeah. And I was like, mate, runners, you yeah. guys, like, yeah. We're the divas. Oh, a, my gosh. What a great lifestyle. Yeah. Following, pretty much following summer as a track girl. Yeah. Um, having your afternoon naps. I thought, yeah. mate, he just lives like a king. So uh, yeah, you need these you need these little hobbies to keep your, your downtime exactly. interesting, hey? You do, and there's only so much Netflix you can watch. So uh -huh. you need to, like, kind of find other things to distract you. Um but yeah, we're, when it comes to Ryan's napping, I must be really frustrating as a wife because I'm. He thinks I'm hyperactive, uh -huh. and I. Anytime he says, "Okay, let's go for a nap," I'm like, "Oh, can we bothered to have a nap? Like, I want to do something fun." So every now and then, um, you know, we'll try nap together. But it always ends up me napping for like five to ten minutes, and then going out my phone and trying to like silently you know scroll Instagram <laughs> or something or, or bet on horses. Yeah. So yeah, when you called. Um, I thought, oh, I should answer it, mm -hmm. and I was trying to whisper, but of course I woke him up. Um, but yeah, he's he's good. He's just so professional. He likes doing all the one percenters, yeah. whereas I'm a bit. I kind of lose my head and want to go, you know, on an adventure somewhere. And it's funny how that works. Like it went so when my wife and I first got together, one of the things that we noticed was, do you, I don't know if you did this when you were younger. You would look at a guy or a girl that you liked, and you'd go up like, oh, we've got so much, much in common. common. Yeah. I look at Jesse. I go, how are we still oh. together? Because like we, she's she's quite serious, quite shy, yeah. like fairly. If you. Um, she always reckons she's got a resting bitch face, which I have to agree with. Like, I've been there long enough now that I can. Um, so I've been, I've been, we were at Crown Casino one night, just as an example of that, and a girl walked past me and was like, have you got a problem? And she's like, oh my God, no, I'm sorry. That's just my face. That's the way I was born. It's just, and uh, like, I'm, I'm, I think the way you explained yourself, like, I'm quite similar to yeah. you. Like, I'm quite out there. I love yeah. to, like, just keep on my toes. Yeah. But it's, it's beautiful, like, the, the dynamics, how they it sort is. of just work together. It's and a I've, counterpart. I think I've heard you guys in interviews talk about how. Like you just you complement each other yeah. in, that, in that way. Is that something that you've noticed? Does Definitely, it sort of work? so different. Like my family uh, noticed even when they first met Ryan, they're like, "You guys couldn't be more different." Yeah. But um, yeah, when I first met him, I kind of thought, "How in earth is this going to work?" But. Uh, it is definitely, yeah, kind of complementing each other. And I think if you had two of me, um, nothing would get done uh -huh. and it would be way too chaotic. But yeah. then if you had two of Ryan, it's the same thing, procrastination and yeah. um, staying up really late and sleeping in too long or <laughs> the room would just get messier and messier. But then, you know, it would probably be too professional because Ryan's very disciplined when it comes to running. Yeah. So we definitely um, offer something to each other that the other doesn't have. And um, the group laugh because... If one of us is out of town, it's just so different what happens. If I'm out of town, they said, you will not see Ryan. He'll hide in his room, follow American sports like, you know, the basketball or the American football. Um, you might see him on a run here and there, but he kind of just, you know, marched to the beat of his own drum. Whereas when Ryan's out of town, it's just me. I turn into like, oh, like ultimate socialite where it's like <laughs> I'm at every cafe. I'm, you know, trying to organize that people going out to dinner because I all of a sudden want to like hang out because I'm lonely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're totally different. Ryan says that I have ultimate FOMO. So if I oh, hear that so someone's funny. doing something, I have to be there. I want to do it. Or if I'm upstairs and I hear we have visitors, I'm like, let's go downstairs and yeah. see who's here. And Ryan's like, oh, I'd rather just not and stay up here. Yeah, that's so, so funny. So, yeah, very different people. It's, um, I've gotta, I'm going to bring it up now because it's right on cue. But I, when do you, how long have you guys been together for now? Um, so this would be in July. It'll be seven years. Yeah. Okay. Gee, that's gone quick. So yeah. the first time I ever heard of you, I think, and I think it's probably the same for a lot of people. I still remember. I was I was sitting at an airport in Melbourne, and it must have been was it 2012 Olympics that you were on the rocks as to whether you were going to be accepted. Yes, the controversial selection. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I remember sitting at an airport. This pretty blonde girl came up on the screen, and I, like you're running along. There was this. Uh, I can't remember the scene. You were running along a road, and I know you're a Florida girl. Yeah, so it was a YouTube video they made. Yeah, yeah. okay. And, yeah. I'm, and I remember thinking, oh, like, uh, what's going on here? And uh, I saw they had the subtitles on, and I was trying to follow the story. And then I remember jumping on Twitter, and there was all this talk. Yeah. And I'm not sure where I heard, but I, I got, heard on the grapevine that Ryan was uh, – was pretty interested, yeah, and the next yeah. thing I heard was like, "Hey, these guys are these guys are official." I thought, "Mate, okay, there's something in that," and I got to try and get Ryan on this podcast at some yeah. stage because there are some serious notes that blokes have to take from 
right oh, in God, this situation. No. That, so how, I don't think how it did work this with come about? Else. How did this come about? Yeah, well, it's funny you say that about the. I actually completely forgot, but when all that um, Twitter stuff happened in 2012 and um, all the controversy of whether I'd be selected or not, I remember Ryan tweeted randomly because I was tagged in it, and it said uh, all this news and controversy meant, uh, surrounding Genevieve Lacaz is bringing back old feelings because, <laughs> like, we'd known each other since we were, like, 16, 17 years yes. old. And then, like, he would, you know, do another tweet where it's, like, put her on the team um, and then it said, like, hey, Athletics Australia, uh, can you room us together? <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> like, who is, like, this kid is just so out there. But it all started in Perth, okay. actually. Um, we had the National Cross there in 2007 and I have always obviously been a year older than Ryan so I was mm-hmm. always the age group above so he, the way he puts it is in his mind <laughs> at that age a girl that's a year older feels like they're 10 years older yes. like it's kind of out of reach just I he thought I was attractive and he was kind of just like oh you know I can say what I want I can be as silly as I want because you know that's never going to happen and yeah. you know I can be a bit of a fool so we were at the National Cross and he's won his um race honestly by a minute or two he yeah. completely killed the field standard and, yeah and I knew of Ryan <laughs> yeah. because of running it was like this child prodigy um everyone would talk about him and I was a good runner but I'd always finish in the top three somewhere mm-hmm. and I think at this race I had come second and uh, I was sitting down with my friend at the time and Ryan's walked over and I know it was Kevin Bat with him and I can't remember who else was with him, um, but he had a little posse and they all had their shirts <laughs> off like little teenage boys yes. in their little running shorts. Yeah, we all love that. I know. Can well, you imagine so the little sexy. scrawny, you know, prepubescent <laughs> boys um, walk up and Ryan, who was just like, hey, Genevieve, and I was like, uh, hi, Ryan. And he's like, do you like what you see? And I was just like, oh, <laughs> wait, this, wait, so this is, this is when you guys are younger. So yeah, and it was yeah. my our first interaction. Yep, yep. Um, so to me, he was just, you know, an arrogant um, runner that obviously was extremely talented and it had all gone to his head. So I was just kind of ignored him a little bit. But I went to college, um, or oh, in 2008, we went to Fools Creek. It was my first Fools Creek camp. Uh, he had a girlfriend at the time, but I just remember thinking, like, who's this show off? You know, he's obviously very confident, but he's funny. And Ryan says that he would do dance moves and stuff in the um, accommodation. And he said that I would always laugh and it would egg him on because he's like, oh, I've got her laughing. So he would keep doing it. But um, then in 2009, I went to college for four years and um, Ryan came over because by then he was running professionally for Nike. He came to Penn Relays and we caught up there and I just sat with him in the stands for a little bit and we chatted. But again, nothing nothing came of it. And then I got a boyfriend and had a boyfriend for a few years. Um, so by the time the Olympics rolled around, we'd had a little bit of history, but really it was is the furthest it went was we were in uh, sorry Facebook friends and I would see him do something amazing like get the Australian record and I would write on his page hey Ryan congratulations on the Australian record and he would respond with you're hot and I'm like <laughs> okay that's really rude um and then you know I would message him again when he raced well and everyone's talking about him and I'd say hey congratulations I saw you had a really good race hope all is well and then he would respond back yeah same thing you're hot but then one day he kind of said, yeah, thanks, everything's going well. I just finished my apprenticeship. I'm now like a fully qualified electrician living on the Gold Coast or something. And I was just like, great. I had no reason to not believe that story. And I just said, wow, that's fantastic, so happy for you. But then I noticed all these all these friends kept liking it. Like it just got like a ridiculous amount of likes on his comment and I kind of thought, I think he's just taking the piss out of me. <laughs> and in the end, yeah, I found out he just made this complete, like, story up that none of it was true. He just thought it was funny and he lied and just made this elaborate story up that was entertaining to all his mates. So um, that was another part of the weird story. So, yeah, by 2012 when I made the Olympic team, um, we met Nick Bado helped me out the few weeks leading into London and he said, come over, stay in Teddington with my group <clears throat> and you can all – go into the village together and yeah Ryan just you know started to lay down the foundations then um and just do little I remember saying to him oh American boys are way more um kind and polite than Australian boys like I was just you know saying anything because I'd been dating an American guy 
and he's like, oh, what? Like, you know, how were they better? And he go, oh, they just open doors for you and, like, carry your bags and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden Ryan started just, again, taking it to the next level. Just every time I got up, he would, like, oh, no, no, no don't move, Jenny. Let me get your seat. <laughs> or, like, let me take your bag. We were at an airport. He's like, let me take all your bags. Like, let me open the door for you. And it was all jokes. But, I mean, a year later we started dating and haven't really spent much time apart since so it, it's a weird weird story and he was definitely I can't say he was wooing me at any point in time but it definitely must have stuck and um, we've got such good history and it's nice to know that we've known each other you know most of our pretty much our running career and most of our lives so it's cool to have someone um, you know that's been there through it all. That's awesome I'm just upset I'm still a little bit disappointed because I think I congratulated mm-hmm. him on his Australian record on Instagram as well he didn't say didn't anything about hot, me being yeah. hot there was nothing there oh, no. unfortunately but I guess we're not married now so it's, <laughs> yeah, it's worked out well for you. For the best. <laughs> um, so then what yeah I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, yeah your time over in college because I know mm-hmm. nothing about the college system for a bloke who's been in running for so long the, um, I was speaking to McEntee last week. Uh, was it McEntee? Yeah, here he yeah, is, McEntee. Sam. Um, so I was speaking to Sam last week and he was telling me a little bit about his time over there. And yep. it sounds like the, the professionalism of the, oh, the world yeah. of sport over there was, was, was pretty insane compared to Australia. Like what was, it, the, what was your experience? Yeah, like it's crazy because there's so <clears> much <throat> money brought in from the football teams. Um, I co- had no idea, didn't do my research. When I went to Florida, it was, I think I picked it on the weather because it was similar to the Gold Coast. Yeah, I didn't do any research how good the team was or, you know, what I was getting myself into. I just thought, oh, you know, if I'm going to be this far from home, I don't want to be somewhere cold where it snows. Um, So I decided to go to Florida. And, yeah, lucky for me, they'd won like three national championships in the last 365 days. I think they'd won two football and one basketball. So they just had infinite amount of money to you know support the athletes and the program and the facilities everything was just second to none so it was really eye-opening coming from Australia and coming from just being like a high school runner and not really like experiencing facilities like this Um, but it's not even that it's the setup and the structure that they have for the athletes in any uh, sport Um, you have your own academic advisor that plans your schooling around your training so they sit down with the coach kind of say what hours are blocked out when do you need them you know to be doing practice and then we'll put their classes in around so before any other student in the whole of the college gets to select their subjects athletes get put in the subjects first so that they don't block them out oh. um and then the, the all the normal athletes <laughs> yeah. get to go then select their classes so it's just crazy and then again I had so many exams proctored when I was on the road because you wouldn't miss an event for an exam um, because that's just unheard of. You're paid there to compete. Um, so you would, yeah, do your exam on the road most of the time with the athletic trainers and stuff. So it was definitely like living as a professional athlete, but at the same time you're a full-time student. So it's it's crazy and I, I it was an experience of a lifetime and I'm so glad I got to do that because I don't know how kids, you know, go through a full uni degree while they're trying to be professional athletes. Like, that just must be so difficult. Yeah, seriously. And, yeah, this was also just an experience in itself when you start to see the sororities and the fraternities and, um, you know, this whole other world um, outside of the athletics. So... Um, I had a great time because UF was a big school, made a lot of money. Um, you know, it was actually ranked the year before I got their number one party school. But oh, that's, fantastic. That coincides because they won so many national championships. That obviously makes people celebrate every time the football team wins. Yes, so and had nothing to do with your decision about going, hey? No, yeah, I know. <laughs> I apparently didn't do my research. Yeah. Uh, so I think I picked very well. Uh-huh. Um, and also just, you know, I met my best friends still to this day, my bridesmaids were girls that I lived with in college and trained with. So it really was the making of me um, on and off the track. Yeah. And so th- like I could, it, those four years couldn't have been any better. I wouldn't have changed a thing. Yeah. Did, did it sort of get you set for professional lifestyle as a runner? You mentioned that it's so professional, but <laughs> yeah. I, what I like even so many people outside the running scene, I think when you say you just spend your time traveling, um, mm-hmm. like you, a lot of it's in Europe, you're traveling, yep. you're racing, it just it's, it sounds fantastic. I guess yep. and it is, but I guess with professionalism in, in any sport, especially running, like recovery is such a big part of it as well. Yeah. That so much of your time is, you know, that professional, inverted commas, is 
a lot of it with your feet up, just trying to kill time. Like, yeah. How, how do you balance that? And what kind of thing uh, outside <laughs> yeah. of your um your your terrible my, gambling my habit? Yeah. That's that <laughs> you know, or your very gambler. successful gambling habit. <laughs> yeah. I, should say. Uh, I know a new sponsor for the yeah. show. I'm gonna have to contact Betty yeah. and go, hey, look. Yeah. No, uh, I'm a sports bet girl, so go that. Direction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my bad. I would never have uh, yeah. easy. Um. Yeah. It will. I've been asked that question a lot. Um. You know, how did it prepare you for the professional life as an athlete? It has its positive positives and negatives. I would say uh, the positives are when you're in college, like I said, you're doing, you know, six subjects, you're training every day, you're then on the road every few weeks racing, like you're balancing a lot mm. and you're learning how to become an adult with your own responsibilities and time management becomes a huge factor and um, just also learning about your body as you up your training and all that sort of stuff. You know, that obviously prepared me really well. I had a great college career in the sense that I balanced all of that really well and, you know, got a good degree. My grades were great. Uh, and then I also raced really well. But at the same time, you're treated like royalty at a school that, for example, like the one I went to, a Div 1 school, it was all kind of structured for you. Like, yes, I balanced stuff well, but at the same time, it'd be hard not to. You know, they, they put my classes around my training. So I have to turn up to practice I do my running I then walk into the training room where they have athletic trainers and masseuse uh well all the massage therapists kind of wait in there for you to come off there's a cold they used to call it the cold tank if you needed to ice everything's just there ready for you they also have a a fridge full of Gatorade and protein um shakes and protein bars (laughs) and then from there yeah yeah you head off to your class and you do your classes from like well 11 till 3 and then you probably got practice again at 4 o'clock uh, then you've got your academic advisors calling up and saying, you know, are you still on track? I'm, I've seen your grades over the last, um, you know, few weeks. Make sure you don't forget about your assignment due here. And it was just amazing. Mm. You, you had someone continuously on your back to make sure you were on track. Uh, I learned when I went professional and joined Nick Badeau's group, no one was going to hold you accountable every day, you know, every minute of the day. Yes, you turn up to the main sessions, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and there's a group running together on Sunday, but all the hours in between and the other days of running where there isn't someone checking up on you, it's completely up to you to make the right decisions and and run the right distances or the right pace or make the smart decisions when it comes to physio and massage and diet and sleep. And I think I took a few years to really learn, um, you know, how professional you had to be and what it took and what was required to be that best athlete. And I'm so lucky I met Ryan because he'd been doing it since 17, yeah, 18. Yeah. Yeah. And if I didn't have someone like him kind of saying, you know, this isn't college, you don't have someone picking you up in a van and taking you out for the long run and supplying you with Gatorade and protein afterwards, um, I had to learn how to look after myself in all those little 1% um, ways. And I'd, I'd, if I had one thing, like one regret that I wish I could have, you know, gone back and fixed, it would have been, yeah, just do all those little things better at a younger age instead of wasting a few years because I hadn't hadn't been injured in college. I was really lucky. Um, and then when I had my first major injury in 2013, I fell on a steeple in Europe and broke my ankle. Oh. I was so amateur at uh, rehabbing and returning to the sport and I kind of didn't consider all the really important little things other than running mm-hmm. and uh, there was just probably a phase there where I kind of plateaued and didn't really um, you know progress in running and they're they're so important those years and it luckily by 2016 I got my stuff together and worked out what I was doing and then had a great year. Was that, okay, because I remember there was, was 2016 the year where pretty much every race yeah. you ran, you ran a PB? Yeah. So yeah. Even, okay, so that was a culmination of just a, a few years of just making yeah. sure all those 1% yeah. were ticked off. Yeah, and just making a lot of mistakes and kind of writing down what not to do. You uh-huh. know, I, I had a list of my phone, phone leading into 2016 and it was honestly a list of things I needed to be better at um, where I'd gone wrong in the past and... Obviously, a lot's to do with momentum, and I was lucky to keep my body in one piece. So, yeah, the, the layers upon layers of running and racing helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just, you know, talking to Ryan, and he'd had a series of bad years there too from, like, 20 to 25 where he just had to learn everything, like, learn the hard way, everything he'd done wrong, and just try to never make the same mistake. And I guess that's where I kind of am now, which took me a while, but... 
um, when things are going so well, it's hard to listen to your body. And 2016 yeah. was a dream for me. It was every time I touched the track, um, you know, I'd do a PB or something, you know, really exciting. And really at the end of 2016, I probably should have taken a rest and really um, absorbed it all, given mm -hmm. my body that kind of re rest and recovery but I was so pumped about how the year went I kind of just kept the ball rolling and then little niggles started to come in yeah. and one thing turned into another and yeah I kind of battled over the next few years what were some of those uh some of the notes that you took in your phone like some of the things that you're like all right I need to make sure that yeah. this is better were, were, were there any really, standout ones really you? simple ones yeah. it was like it always seems to be the way though oh, doesn't it it's like so it's amazing how the simplest things are the one yeah like whether you're a runner or my life as well it's the most simple things that I'm like why wasn't I paying attention to yeah. that it was little things like um sleep mm -hmm. it's like a minimum of eight hours uh not necessarily nap in the day it's just if you get your full night's rest i just started reading everywhere how important sleep was at night yeah. for recovery um uh, just diet but after training like i wasn't big on getting protein in and everything after big workouts mm -hmm. and that is just like a window of importance after you train and you break down your muscles yeah. i was kind of just yeah, not packing protein, going home, who knows, like 45 minutes to an hour could have passed before I even had had a meal yet. Yeah. Um, so little mistakes like that that is so easily fixed. So now I don't leave the house for a run without having my protein with me at all times yeah. or at least some sort of fuel to just replenish your system. Um, things I added in gym, like, uh, by 2016, mm -hmm. there were a few niggles I'd had in the past with my pelvis and like feet and ankle joints. So I had all little rehab cues of, you know, you must do these throughout the week and, um, just general stuff like pick days throughout the week where your intensity matters and you want to run hard, but there has to be the down days where mm -hmm. you let your body kind of just run for time and, you know, feel the energy levels you have, not just whack every run and think that more, you know, how fast is more and longer runs are like need to be sub four minute pace. Yeah. So yeah, it was just kind of almost finding that balance and not being, you can work too hard mm. in this sport of us all being a little bit OCD yes. and, you know, we're obviously always on a fine edge. Um, you have to learn to be a little kind to yourself at times and not, um, you know, be pushing in every facet. Yeah. So... Yeah. So an example, like, so you ran, you told me before we started that you ran, what, 26K this morning. Yeah. So that, yeah, okay. So, and I know I've, I was saying to you as well that I was down there a couple of weeks ago running with the other group and the pace that you guys ran past yeah. us, I was so glad that I wasn't in your group. Yeah. Um, there's, I think there's about, there must have been four or five of you girls yeah. leading the way and I was like, mate, you guys would have put me to shame. It's intense. Um, so 26Ks, what, what pace are you running that today? Yeah. So this, my Sunday runs now, just, this is my second week of it, believe mm -hmm. it or not. Uh, are now pretty much playing as my third session for the week. Yeah. Um, so luckily for me, we've got a really strong marathon group. There's uh, Andrea, Sinead and Charlotte, and they're obviously preparing for longer stuff like half marathon and marathon. Uh, and they're, they're doing intense long runs as, you know, that's their bread and butter for the yeah. week. So I've kind of started to jump in with them, <laughs> even though they run an hour before I get there. Um, I jump in with them and run an hour 45 now. So yeah. I used to just be a 90-minute girl thinking that was, you know, plenty. But I've uh, Nick and I have changed my week around a lot just due to having a very injury-prone past um, where now I only do two sessions. I'll do Tuesday, Friday. Um, but I make Sunday real quality. Yeah, uh, So, sure. yeah, now I run 26K um, an average anywhere between 358 oh, and 402. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh so, my god! And so it that's feels that fast. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was high five a couple of weeks ago because the the race. Uh, sorry, the the race. It was a racing model. <laughs> the run that I did uh, where you guys ran past us. I think I think we averaged like 416s. And yeah. I, I got back in the car. I was like, mate, I'm the king. I'm back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking so at like Olympic yourself. qualifying standards. And I'm like, I think we can do it. And uh, that's, uh, that's not mucking around. Yeah. It's I love it. My strength is the aerobic side. Okay. Um, I've always been more of an engine over distance um, than, you know, the anaerobic work. So long runs have always definitely been my strength. And I, have in the past, tended to try run with the boys. Like that's when I would try run with Ryan is on a long run day. Mm -hmm. Um, but now with trying to rearrange my week and get more quality days rather than up my Ks, which we're trying not to do, 
I just make Sunday, yeah, a really quality run, which is fun for me because, yeah, I can run with the boys or I yeah. can run with the marathon girls. But, yeah, I treat it like a session. It's I wake up, I limber up, I do a few leg swings. I do, yeah, yeah okay. Because I know that once, you know, I get going, there's no mucking around. Um, yeah. And you have to feel good for those type of days. Like we were at one point towards the end running in the 340s. Oh, and I'm so glad I was That is really morning. hard, <laughs> yeah. So these girls are machines. They're just so fit. Um, and like I'm saying Sunday's, you know, a big day for them, but every day is a big day for them. They do massive sessions on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then it, they today they did a two and a half hour long run. Wow, okay, so, so they're doing three sessions plus this yeah, long run. Yeah, they do a lot of work. Um, I mean, they have to. They've got, you know, the marathon coming up and they've both qualified for the Olympics, so they're obviously um, in full training. But the way their bodies back up, I just can't comprehend. So Charlotte... Um, She's an English girl on our team, Charlotte Perdue. She told me today she did 200K a week. And I was like, that's double what I do. 200K yeah. this week. She just absorbs it so well. Her and Sinead, they're very, very so the, are they, like is she a Is she a marathon runner? Yep. yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It seriously blows my mind to see the amount of Ks. And, and as you say, like the ability to be yeah. able to just back it oh, up I and know. absorb the work. So once you finish that, you get back in the car. And what's your what's your snack? How do you replenish that? So I always have a protein um, shake afterwards. <clears throat> and Ryan and I usually, if it's a long day like that, we also pack um, just like protein nut bars and stuff just also to get something in our belly because you're obviously starving by that point. Ryan sometimes runs with little um, natural confectionery uh, oh, does lollies. He? Yeah. yeah, but I think that's more just for his enjoyment, not for fuel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something to do. <laughs> he makes it like feel like it's kind of his way of, you know, doing a long run and getting the extra calories in. But no, I think he just likes eating lollies when he runs. <laughs> um, do, you but, know, like, do you ever take gels and stuff on a run like that? Or? No, I mean, hour 45, I've only done twice now in my life. So it's all new to me, but I don't think that's long enough for me at the moment to feel like I need fuel out sure. there as long as I fuel well the night before and I have like a decent sized breakfast yeah um that feels good for me but the girls they have to take gels because they need to practice digesting yeah, while sure. running so they all have gels more as practice I know Brett Robinson does the same do you know what gels they're using because I'm on the hunt at the moment trying um, to think about maybe Morton yeah, Morton's yeah. The, the popular one I, the a lot moment, of people are real like I know Brett's big on Morton and um it seems like that's definitely been all the craze right now so I, I I don't know how I could drink or eat something oh, while I'm running. I have always so been bad at that. Yeah, well. my stomach just wouldn't allow me to digest it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they they said that they have to practice it because you don't have an option in a marathon. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they you know time it and try get it all in. Yeah. And what are you eating? So you, you said you fuel up the night before the morning yep. of. Like, what are you what are you having for those little snacks? Or I for just, those meals. Yeah, I just make sure the night before. I never skimp on carbs. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not a massive, like I don't carbo load for in much in my week because nothing's ever that long. But a Saturday night, you know, I just make sure that I have rice or potato or bread or something yeah. significantly in my um, meal because I know I'll need it. You know, I'll need the glycogen stores the next day. And then the morning of is the same every single day of the week. I have four rye crackers with peanut butter, honey, cinnamon and banana slice stuff on oh, top of it super savory hey? yeah yeah and it's got a little bit of sweet yeah so um it's like my treat i actually look forward to it it's really, really enjoyable. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and ryan has peanut butter on toast with a banana so we um yeah we do that every breakfast morning champions. there's yeah. gonna be so many people in australia who have just updated yeah yeah, yeah yeah i don't know why <laughs> like peanut butter wasn't massive in australia but when you're on the kind of athlete circuit you realize all athletes eat peanut butter yeah. it's like the key food <laughs> yes. you don't if you go to a meet and they haven't supplied peanut butter at breakfast people start panicking or they've been smart and brought their own peanut butter yeah and it's just such easy calories oh, isn't it yeah. as well like and if yeah, it's good fats yeah, yeah it kind of sticks to your stomach well so it's definitely something we all use a lot yeah. especially around race day yeah so what do you what do you got on the cards at the moment so what are we now it's uh end of february, end of aren't february. We? so it's sort of starting to get towards towards business season for yep. you guys yes uh, so it's <laughs> Nick's been really smart with us all this year. He's kind of, um, you know, made sure that any time we race, it's for purpose. You know, we don't not doing any kind of junk racing. Um, I just came off the 5,000 metre national champs. That was kind of a fitness test for me. I wanted to see where I was at. And, um, you know, I haven't done too many races domestically over the last four years due to injury. Mm -hmm. So that was fun to do. But my next race is nationals um, where I'm hoping to, you know, really – 
solidify my spot in the Olympic team if I win. Um, that's an auto selection. So yeah. that's end of March. Um, I wanted to do a race probably this past weekend. I was really pumped to race, but Nick, he's smart like that. He kind of just said, let's just get the job done, go to nationals, try win, yeah. um, and then we can, you know, get, be more ambitious or adventurous. What when are you it comes racing at nationals? Uh, the steeple. The, okay, so the steeple. Yeah. So you've got yeah, you got one eye on the steeple, one eye on the ten. Yes. Yeah. So, so you're national champ over ten now, aren't you? Yeah. So yeah. I was, I was your cheer squad that night. <laughs> oh, I, it was so, it's so, it's so cringy because. Uh, because obviously I I know who you are through following yeah. the running scene. You would have had no idea who I was. <laughs> but I didn't know if you did or didn't. Yeah. So I was sort of standing on the start as you were about to warm up, go to the head uh, at the start line, and I gave you like a go get them, Jen. And, oh, that's um, nice. And you were yeah, but you looked at me going, mate, this bloke is. <laughs> I didn't want your encouragement, so I was like, yeah, I shouldn't have. No. I, sh I was waiting for a beat. Hey, guys, good to yeah. see you so much. Honestly, like I'm really looking forward to it. And you just get, uh, you, you had race face on. To be yeah, fair, I had resting bitch face. Yeah, you yeah. did big time. <laughs> But yeah, you went out and won it, so you justified it. Quite. Yeah, no good. I'm glad I put on a show, but um, I probably heard you and then looked and realised I didn't recognise you, so I would have like panicked. Me. And I'm like, wait, was that for me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I was laughing with Jenny Blundell at the five k because so many people were saying go Jen, uh -huh. but we couldn't distinguish who they were cheering for because like people call me Jen and people call her Jen and so she's like I just pretended they were all cheering for me and I was like good I pretended they were all cheering for me <laughs> so that was kind of funny but yeah so I have got um one eye on the 10 uh, I think it's a big ask just because I'm coming from lower mileage and the 10k is no joke and I've only done one of them but um because I don't really have a chance to run any more other than one in Stanford that's my only hope I won't the ranking points I would need oh, to get okay. into the team. Sure. So it's I either get the time, the, the automatic qualifier, which is a lot faster than I've ever run, um, to get selection or, yeah, I, I won't be able to be selected. So that is another goal of mine. Once Nationals is done, I'll head over to America and do a four-week camp in Flagstaff with yep. a few other girls in our team yeah, awesome. and plan on racing – as fast as I can at um, Stanford and oh, try getting so close to that time as So possible. what's the qualifying time? Did you say 31.25? 31.25, yeah. yeah. And w w obviously it was quite a slow rate. Like you, the, the, what was your last lap at the at Uh you 66. Guys, oh, you yeah. guys wound it up. I was trying to get around Andrew, but she was oh, putting on the... She bloody made you work for yeah, it. Yeah, she did. Did you come past her with about 120 to go, did Oh, you? not even. Nah. I was like 80 to go. She's a little pocket rocket. I, 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 I didn't know who she was. And then I thought, this chick's doing well to hang on. Yeah, no, she's And then she's when she started good. laying it down, I was like, who is this chick? Yeah, no, so she trains in our group. She's um, a good athlete and had an awesome year last year. She broke 15 in the 5K oh, wow. in Doha, <gasps> um, which was a huge achievement. And she, I know she's a handy 10K runner as well. So um, that was, I knew that was going to be a tough ask racing her at Zatapec but I probably was lucky it was so slow for the first 5k because yeah. um, I'm definitely fitter now but at the time I probably would have been in trouble if it was you know a pace race from the gun and yeah. we were running you know three tens it would have been difficult so it's just scary because it's so far on the oh, track as well it's isn't so it? It's a different, far. people don't understand that it's just that like from outside the running yeah. season it's just a different world yeah. on the track like you hit 5k's into a track and race and you go up oh, another half. 5k whereas it, on a road it's like oh, we're halfway there do yeah. you know what I mean I know it's so definitely the laps hurt the, yeah how did you lap, find that I just told myself I couldn't look at the counter, like the lap counter, until I thought I was nearly home. Okay. And I think the time I looked up, it might have said like seven laps to go, and I'm like, oh, that's like tough. <laughs> it's nearly 3K. <laughs> um, but uh, it was just, it was a lot of fun, and um, it's kind of one of those things when I was asking Nick, you know, how do I approach this? I was asking another teammate of mine, Camille, who's over in the UK. I was like, you've done a lot of 10Ks, you know, what, What's it feel like? How do I approach this mentally? And she's like, kind of break it up into three stages, you know, almost in like stages of three kilometers. Yeah. You know, the first 3K is really cruisy. It always feels easy. Um, and she said, but the middle 3K really hurts. Yeah. It's like. Is this Buscombe? Buscombe? What's yeah, Buscombe. Camille Buscombe. Buscombe. Yeah. Because I, I was messaging her randomly the other day. She said to say hello. Because oh, I was trying hey. to drop in the fact that I was having an interview with you. Yeah, so okay. I was just some random part. I go, hey, come on, I've got Jen this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, she's yeah. lovely. She's yeah. so fun. Sorry to um, No, but she was, she just gave me great advice. She said, look, the middle 3K is tough and. Sometimes in the middle of it, you can think, am I even going to make it? Yeah. Uh, and she goes, but if you can kind of get to the 
somewhere between seven and nine K um, in one piece, you know, you're nearly home and you yes. can mentally can kind of wrap your head around it and get ready to kick. So that helped a lot. Cause I did, I tried to kind of split it up into stages and, and block out the fact that it was a long way ahead. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I just think that going and doing a fast 10 K from the gun is going to be a whole nother, yeah. you know, like, oh, I right. I just, yeah, month. I, I hope I go well, but I could underestimate just the fact that <laughs> it's a lot harder than running 5k reasonably easy and then 5k hard. Yeah. I know so. it was a slow race at, at Zatapec, but what did you end up, what was your finish? Um, time I think we ran 32 47. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But that like yeah. that second half. But yeah, was first quick. 5k was 17 minutes and then our second 5k was 15 47. So oh, wow. it was a bit. That's not a bad bloody 5k time, Yeah, I, that gave me confidence for the 5 because I knew I was fitter at the 5, but then again, those five, the early pace of the 5 hurt me too. But the 5k Melbourne was a funny one as well because I uh, – was it really smoky? Yeah. Because I remember going for a jog that day and I knew crazy. that you guys were racing and I was thinking, oh, and I know there was a couple of names. Like I, I don't know if this is the reason why, but I saw like Dave McNeil when he was on the podcast was talking about the fact he was mm-hmm. targeting that. And then I noticed he didn't start and I thought, oh, I wonder if yeah. that's No, he developed a niggle with... leading in oh, okay. and um, – you know, had to have some time away. So he, yeah, he couldn't race. But I, I was worried because we got an email like a day before saying, oh, we'll let you know what we do in regards to the smoke. And I was oh, like, oh, no, because we'd had race. such a great week. Yeah. And I'm like, the smoke hasn't been an issue in so long. And then we were driving to the track along Beach Road coming from Sandy towards the city. Yeah. And we could not see out past like a few metres in the water. Could Obviously couldn't see in the city. And I was like, oh, oh no, we, we do not need this. But then I thought, well, we're all in the same boat. It's not going to, um, you know, hurt half the field and the other field's fine. Um, so it wasn't great conditions, but I was really lucky because we had the Japanese girl who has just run 66 for the half marathon. And Until in, she's run. Yeah, and in Doha she ran 31, like 13. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's just a little rocket. Yeah. Um, and I'd heard through the grapevine that she was – yeah, going for it and setting the pace early. And then obviously we had Jess Hull, who is no joke right mm-hmm. now. Um, and I just had to hold on for as long as possible. Um, they managed to, I think Jess put 14 seconds on me in the last lap, or the last 500. She so had that a really hurt. Good race, yeah. Didn't she? But she, um, has she raced a few 15s in the lead yeah. up to that as well? Well, she well, got the Aussie record for indoor 1500 um, the two weeks prior. So I knew she would be yeah. close to impossible to sure, beat. I yeah. needed her to have a bad day or slip on a banana peel. So yes. <laughs> I, I wasn't hoping for that, but oh, I you're, think. You're a nicer athlete than oh, me. Yeah. If I was you, I would have been planting him. It's just random spots around the track. No, Jess is so lovely. You can't not like her. She's yeah, just sure. so humble and sweet. So it was actually fun. I haven't raced her before, um, but I she grew up around where Ryan grew up. So I've known of her for a long time yeah. and I followed her career in college at Oregon so it was nice to get to race her because she's definitely the next big thing in Australian athletics yeah how old is she um uh, maybe 23 or 24 yeah okay yeah. it's funny you say she's humble because I got that vibe I, was, I, I saw the the last couple of laps of your race and I saw her come across the line she had this big sweet smile oh, on yeah, her face I thought oh is. good like she just looked she looked like a no she has a nice, she's a nice the seat. kind of she's almost too nice because you know probably people get competitive at races and you're in the cool room you're probably catch people's vibe where they just kind of locked in the zone and don't give you much but Jess is just so sweet and you know we'll talk to anyone smile to anyone she'll warm down with you at the end like she's just a lovely girl and yeah you obviously you always wish well for people like that because they have it all and they you know you can't say a bad word about them yeah especially you're right like it's interesting like uh, just before the heat of battle when you're you, you know you've got game yeah. face on it is hard to be how yeah. do you find that because there'd be a lot of people who'd be Sort of like respect what you've done and the fact that you're Jen. Yeah. I was going to say Jen. Like I have to keep catching myself. Yeah, Gre- Gregson. Jen Gregson. Yeah, hey? <laughs> um, like is that is that something that's difficult for you to, to switch on and off? Like um, or have you mastered the art of just trying to? All right, it's, it's race I've, time now. Yeah, I've definitely got a lot better when it comes to races and nerves and like how to channel my energy and what's the best way for me. And I actually learned that off Ryan. It's best to distract your mind. For the type of person I am, I don't want to be thinking about the race. I don't want to be thinking about splits. I don't want to kind of work myself up, especially at that time of, you know, the race. When you're at the call room, there's nothing you can change with the result. If anything, the more relaxed you are, the better I'm going to compete. Um, So in call rooms, I'm one of those people that I'll talk to anyone. And if someone wants to talk to me, it's good because it relaxes me. I really love seeing familiar faces, even at the international level. I make sure that 
Um, I'm really friendly with all the girls that I see and race often oh, because cool. yeah. it definitely helps me being in the cool room and seeing a familiar face that I know, you know, I'm friendly with Yeah. because then I'll just kind of glue to them and chat and it calms me down a little bit. Yeah. The, the worst type of race is going in a cool room, being really nervous and not knowing a single person in there because yeah. you, you can't talk to anyone and you're kind of just sitting there in your own thoughts. So, yeah, I definitely I like warming up with people, I like warming down with people and, um, yeah, I'm a talker in the cool room. Obviously, I'm not going to be annoying and try like psych everyone out. Sure, but, yeah. yeah, I do prefer to have familiar faces in the cool room. I'm sure the young chat. athletes in there as well would appreciate that. Yeah, it's yeah. It's funny, like the – it's weird as you – what are you – how old are you now? 30. Oh, are yeah, you 30? Okay, yeah. was that recent or – Um, Last year in August. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, it, It's weird as you start to come through your 20s, hit your 30s mm-hmm. and stuff, and you become a, you know, a, like a real respectable yeah. figure who's done a lot in the field. It's so intimidating, isn't it, for the young athletes? Oh, you probably wouldn't notice it because you're just be used to that field, but to have yeah. you speaking to them, yeah. just, it probably relaxes not only you, but helps them just feel like, oh my gosh, this is Jen Dixon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Cute. Like it's a. No, I just know that version. as a kid, I think the one thing that I really struggled with was. Um, nerves I guess I loved the training I loved racing and then the post-race feeling but the scariest part about what I did as a kid was yeah that pre-race feeling where yeah. you're in the call room and you think you're not good enough or you know you're like oh I'm not as good as her you know I'm not going to go well I haven't been feeling good this week and you get those kind of doubts and feelings where you're probably you know almost regretting being there <laughs> and I just know that that was yeah the worst part of um competing and if I can make a young girl or anyone in a call room feel a little more relaxed and kind of think, hey, there's there's not the end of the world. Yeah, you know, sure. you don't have to do anything special. You just have to go out there and do exactly what you've been practicing every day. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a comforting feeling if if I can make someone feel a little bit better before they go out on the track. Do you um I wanted to ask you as well before we we've got a few minutes left. Yeah, uh, you're fine. Uh like with your so your your social media presence is is monstrous at the moment, yeah. especially in a distance running scene. Like it's just yeah. a it's a scene where it's not it, it's a bit of a niche sport. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so it that, is. to have a a following. What are you? You got like a hundred thousand more on 137. your Instagram. One hundred thirty-seven. Okay, Sorry, so you got one hundred thirty times. I pride myself times. on my Instagram. That's <laughs> well, my job. <laughs> you nailed it. Well, interesting. Okay, I wanted to ask you about when you say it's your your job. So yeah. Are you do you do you make money through sponsors and stuff on there or? Is how does that work? Because it's obviously with a platform like that. Yeah. I've decided to track myself for my own question. My original one I was going to ask you about was: Is there an extra layer of pressure that comes with just so many people being aware of who you are and what races you've got coming up, and um, yeah. even little things like that? I saw you doing some hurdles the other day, which is just I got interested. Going, oh, what's, yeah. what's Jen doing here? It looked yeah. like some ad or some marketing. Yeah, running camp. way too fast over way too many hurdles. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not the steeple test. She's yeah. very coordinated. Yeah, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say. Is that a question? I don't even know if I just. Yeah, asked no, you a I get what you're asking. Um, it, it's I wouldn't say there's added pressure because of my presence I love documenting um stuff on Instagram and I enjoy sharing a lot of it I would say the only time where I find it difficult uh is when I'm hurt or I'm injured and I'm not in a good place you know for me and it's hard to stay upbeat and continue updating my followers on how everything's going and I know people want to know everything they don't want to just know when it's going well but I used to struggle to pretend that I was fine and do these, you know, upbeat posts like coming along just fine doing a two-hour bike ride. (laughs) Like I'm in a really bad place but I'm going to pretend this is fun. Um, So I think the more I can be okay with sharing the vulnerability and, um, yeah, just when I'm down and out, you know, it's okay. You know, maybe it'll be a little less pressure, but I don't find pressure when I know a race is coming up. Say, for example, on Thursday night when we had the um, Melbourne Track Classic, I don't find pressure when I'm like, hey, everyone, I'll be racing at 7 o'clock. Feel free to watch the stream and tune in and support me. Ryan kind of says, oh, I don't want to put stuff on Instagram in case I'm crap race and everyone was watching. It's really awkward. Whereas, like, I don't think that way because sure. – People aren't going to expect me to have a good day every day. So if I tell everyone to tune in and watch me and I have a bad day, it's like, oh, well, she's human. Yeah. I don't – and even if you have people think otherwise, that doesn't affect me. Um, you obviously – I've said this before, you get trolls on Instagram, but they're people that probably don't deserve an opinion and will have a go at you about something completely irrelevant to what you're doing. Um, but that's just this day and age with social media. Everyone has access to saying something to someone um, that – I, I use Instagram as my, I say, my day job, 
But it's yeah. just because I do have a lot of time on my hands and I'm obviously running is a niche sport and there's not a whole lot of money in athletics in Australia. Um, and so I kind of try and make myself available for other commercial opportunities and like that's fun. Like I do talking engagements as oh, well. Do you have yeah. your schools and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, and just like women in sports is... stuff. Ah, oh, beautiful, yeah. Um, which I really enjoy just because, I don't know, maybe I like talking about myself and my story. But that's it's fun. Story yeah, it's there, fun yeah. to just, um, you know, show girls. It hasn't always been easy, you know, the whole way through and it wasn't just like this fairy tale that unfolded every step of the way and I've had to fight for things sometimes and um, go through adversity other yeah. times. So there's a lot... In any athlete, everyone has a great story yeah. and I think more of us should tell it because running is such a difficult sport. Oh, it's an individual it? um, event and um, I think we got it really tough out there to be versing the best in the world and um, sometimes not for much money. Yeah. But, yeah, the commercial side's fun and my Instagram, I'm proud of it. But, though, Ryan likes to take more credit than I can because behind all those photos is my cameraman, <laughs> he's just Ryan Gregson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just don't have be you fooled. heard of boyfriends of Instagram? Yeah, no, he's husband's of Instagram now. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. The boys catch him out sometimes when they see them him taking a photo of me. They'll try to catch him and send it into husbands of Instagram or boyfriends of Instagram. But... Um, I laugh because everyone's like, oh, Ryan takes such great photos. And I was like, what you don't see is the hundred he had to take and me to like scroll <laughs> yes. through and find one that looks yes. good. Um, no, but he's he's so good. He knows that, um, you know, he's in the firing line when it comes to setting up my social media. So he does it very willingly. Oh, and it's a very high-pressure job taking is. photos of your wife. I'm yeah. so glad Jessie's not here right now because she gets one chance. I go, <laughs> oh, babe, yeah. She goes, babe, could you please take a photo? She's pregnant at the moment. Oh. And the other day, uh, she, she's like 14 weeks, so she's just started to show like this little bump. And the other day, she goes, babe, could you just take a photo of me? And I go, oh, okay, no worry, I'll take one. <laughs> so I, I took one photo. She's like, babe, I've got my eyes closed. I go, babe, it's your opportunity. <laughs> yeah. so Keep Ryan, them open. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, yeah, it's like, no. Ryan, Ryan's patience is brilliant. I, that's one thing I don't have and he has. Yeah. Um, but sometimes Sometimes I'll get really frustrated because they're constantly, the lighting's bad. Look, I just constantly am not liking the photo and I'll be like, come on, Ryan, like, give me one. And he's like, okay, is it the photographer or is it the talent? And I was like, <laughs> Great question. be very careful with yeah, your words. Yeah, so true. Okay. I'm, 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 it's one of those things, you know, the Instagram stories have, have so many takes, but I'm glad to see that yours yeah. doesn't look as, like as it does based on the fact that it's just one shot because mine is horrendous but most no. of mine are attempts at selfies on my old iphone 5 oh cute which is uh, it's not very cute it's quite distressing to see what selfies I look like. aren't very flattering yeah they're not i don't know why i'm still doing them i was gonna ask you a question Jen, just to wrap it up and i forgot what it was not to do with instagram um, no it was to do with instagram and i uh or sponsorship or uh yeah yeah that's what i was gonna ask when you said it was a day job um yep. is it like a literally a day job is that something where sponsors come to you and they say hey look we've got this product i think it's in line yep. with what you do would you be happy to share it or yeah. is it the day job as in gives you something to do while you're... No, I mean, I love Instagram. Like, yeah. I use it as a outlet to also, you know, follow other sports stars or different, you know, sports. As in, you know, I would follow... I think I follow even some... I follow Tom Brady. That was because of Ryan. <laughs> but I kind of... I'm interested in all sorts of things, but I follow a lot of my opposition, yeah. not in a negative way, as in I'm so interested in running and athletics. Like, yeah. I love it. Um I want to know what other people do. I want to know what other groups do. I want to know the dynamic of, you know, a group full of girls or a really professional group uh, that have all these different girls that run different events. There's so much um, out there. And with social media, it gives you an option of um, being able to see stuff unfold that back in the day you wouldn't have even known about. Like no one knew about what anyone was doing back then. And also with my cross training, I do a lot of cross training and there's a lot of girls I follow to get um, ideas from or just to see that I'm not the only one that has to add in a lot of, you know, biking or swimming. Yes. Um, but I also use it as um, a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I do go out and seek sponsorship or I'll get contacted through my Instagram and then I kind of shuffle through free product that I don't want yes. <laughs> and then kind of um, take on things that I know that I actually really enjoy um, and that make my life easier. Um for example, like Garmin is really supportive with me, but Garmin watches like are just the best thing ever That's invented. So like idea. I cannot live without my yeah, Garmin are you on watch. Strava? No, so everyone was telling me that I should get on Strava since I love my Garmin so much. But I love my Garmin because I track everything in my phone manually. Like I'm obsessed. I write 
every I've written every session down since 2013 like every all my cross training every K I've run every session every race um, and that's like my little thing that I like to do and without my Garmin watch I can't do any of that uh, so I should get on Strava because it does it for you and I'd save a lot of time <laughs> in my day but that's not something I'm worried about right now yeah um, so yeah they've been supportive and but it's a, something I can add that I need um, and I've recently been doing uh, my muscle chef which is a uh, pre-packaged meals. I saw this. Yeah, yes. and like it is a game changer. Was it the Ocean Honesty Kitchen just yeah, now? Was yeah, it, I was yeah. like, I recognise this yeah. kitchen. <laughs> but like Ryan's like, we can never go back to cooking because, you know, not that we're the busiest people in the world, but Ryan runs every afternoon. We head out for the day, do all our training at different uh, locations and by the time we walk in the door around 4 or 5 o'clock, uh, that's when I would normally make us dinner, and now I can just get my prepackaged meal. That's so awesome. that's been really convenient. Um, so little things like that. Yes, they're sponsorship, and it's great because it helps me make an income. But at the same time, it adds to my life. Yeah. Um, and I'm all about taking on things that add to my life, not just things to have. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Jen, oh, that was. Awesome. I know you've got to go get Ryan soon. No, um, well, he's not arriving for another hour, so don't feel rushed. Uh, awesome, awesome. Thanks so much for making the time. I'm so glad we got. I think we've been trying to organise this since November. I know you were so patient. I feel um, terrible, but no, I really good. appreciate it, no, I'm and glad I'm glad. That yeah. was fun. Yeah, it was. It's awesome. so easy too. Awesome. Oh, hopefully, yeah. well, if you want to, we'll try and do something later in the year. We'll yeah. Catch up on um, Tokyo. Yeah. No, that'd be great. Medal. Yeah. Come on, God. Jen. Anyway, all right. We'll leave you to it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Tyson. Awesome.